Today's video is sponsored by Pickers Grip. Stop dropped picks and pick rotation while playing with Pickers Grip. Made with all natural ingredients in Virginia. Check out their website to order. When you support my sponsor, this also supports my channel and it's very much appreciated. How does Teflon stick to the pan? Oh, welcome to you. I just finished going through all of my pedals and uh, adding some shelves and reorganizing everything. So I thought I'd show them to you guys. Come on. All righty. So welcome to uh, the video documenting my pedal collection uh, circa 2020, September 2020 to be specific. Uh, I get a lot of people asking me how many pedals and stuff that I've got, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I thought, you know, I just went through everything here this past weekend. I still had some, you know, some pedals that were mounted to pedal boards and stuff that don't really get used. So I pulled all those off and uh, added some more shelves and, uh, you know, put everything on shelves where they belong. And uh, so now they're all out on shelves where you guys can see them. So, uh, like I said, I thought I would come through and, you know, just show you guys everything that, uh, everything that I've got. So what you're looking at here is, uh, these are, that's, you know, kind of, that's my, uh, my expression pedal shelf, you know, nothing too fancy there. That's a Morley, uh, bad horsey one, original Morley, bad horsey one, uh, a Morley little alligator volume pedal greatest volume pedal in the world that is uh, just a yamaha expression pedal designed to be used with keyboards and any other pedals that uh, might have an expression out on it and uh, that is a dunlop now the back of it's covered up with velcro but uh trust me that is in fact a 95q there in the corner behind all the guitars, and I don't want to touch those because those are actually sitting on that shelf very, very delicately. Uh, you've got two of uh, my favorite wah pedal, the Ibanez Weeping Demon. There's, I actually own three of them. You might see that gap, you know, that space there on the very end of the shelf between the shelf and the wall. And the reason that shelf is there is because the third one actually I bumped up, you know, <laughs> that base I actually bumped into it and knocked the pedal off and it fell back behind the bookshelf there. And it is really, really difficult to move that around and pull it out. So fortunately the one that fell back there was the backup and I'm not going to need it anytime soon. Those other two, I've got one set up for guitar and one set up for bass. That is a Rocktron Banshee 2 that I've had forever and ironically as you know uh, as cool as I think talk boxes are I've actually never plugged that pedal in and I've had it for years uh you know I bought it because I, I, I thought it was a cool pedal and and it is a cool pedal but uh you know I was hoping I would have a use for it and you know one just never arose so Digitech Whammy 5 my favorite version of the Digitech Whammy pedal uh, not to be confused with my least favorite version of the Digitech Whammy pedal, which would be the Whammy 4. Uh, the Whammy 5 was a huge improvement over the Whammy 4. And I got some empty space here that I cleared out. That's where I'm sure more pedals will arrive, and that's where they're going to live when they do. Those Delta Lab pedals were, those are cool. Those were actually a, a Guitar Center exclusive pedal brand when they were, uh, when they were being made. You know, and, uh, you know, they weren't anything flashy, boutique -y as far as feature-wise. You know, they were all kind of, you know, basically clones of uh, other well-known pedals. But they all sounded, actually, most of them anyway, sounded really, really good. Uh, that tube driver, what's unique about it, that they actually did have a recall on those. And they called all, they recalled all those back and fixed whatever they needed to fix on them and sent them back out. But where the you see the tube driver logo there, they actually put a... Uh, a sticker on it and you know what and renamed the pedal altogether as the the you know, tube overdrive the yeah they, they changed the name from the tube driver to the tube overdrive so the model name became the from went from the td1 to the to1 and uh 
I bought mine before they recalled it and never sent it back in. And, you know, it's, it's always worked fine. I've never had any issues with it. But uh, I like the sound of it. You know, not a bad little tube screamer clone. And then a little three-knob flanger right next to it. And that, uh, that DD-1 there was, a, you know, that's a digital delay pedal. I used that delay pedal for a long time. I really, really liked that delay when I, when I was using it. There is my collection of uh, George Tripp's designed Line 6 tone core pedals i don't have the whole series uh i've got uh pretty much i've got kind of the highlights uh the uber metal the space chorus uh which is actually a really 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 good sound of chorus uh the tap tremolo the most famous pedal out of that line and probably the one that's the most desirable on the used market today is the echo park uh you know lines say what you want about line six but they got that delay pedal right and that is a great delay pedal and uh, that's the verbzilla right next to it those things you can actually pop the cores out of them the modules and replace them with additional you know with other modules which you see sitting there on top and the ones on top there you got you got the auto filter uh the constrictor which is their compressor and the uh, crunch tone which is their uh regular distortion pedal as opposed to the uber metal which was the metal distortion pedal and if you were looking for a metal distortion pedal with no mid-range in it whatsoever, that is the pedal for you. Uh, those are the Baiyang Metal End pedals. The one on the left is the Metal End King, which is the better sounding one. And the one on the right is the what they call the Metal End Pro, or the Standard Metal Pro, Standard Metal End. Metal, basically, you know, exact same pedal, but they just they put higher end components in the Metal End King, so it sounds better. Add another string rack there courtesy of mr tony ramsey who had a spare sitting around he gave me thank you sir uh let's see this shelf over here uh this is just kind of where i i kind of tried to organize everything by brand as you can you probably already been able to tell and you know this shelf here is kind of where you know pedals where i own one of <laughs> pedal brands that i own one of all kind of went here with the exception of that carl's custom guitar speaker soak there on the left that's not a pedal that's a that is an attenuator and uh I, I did a video on that like three years ago that still gets a lot of views today i get a lot of people checking out that video to see how it see how it sounds and it's a it's a good sounding little attenuator for what it is it's only like 40 50 bucks uh this a few other pedals there you've uh, you guys have seen me demo on my channel recently there we go now we can see a little better uh demo the saucy box here about you know a year and a half two years or so ago i think uh the cool music insane that's a inexpensive little little metal distortion pedal you get on amazon did that one here just a few months ago the peppers pedal satanist distortion one of the best metal distortion pedals on the planet uh right next to the greatest uh tube screamer circuit on the planet which is the high wind amplification dire wolf everything about that pedal is killer everything about that thing is cool Sounds good, looks cool. A lot of different tonal options on it. Uh, and here next, those next four pedals there, those are the, uh, what I call the Park Kingery section. Uh, Park Kingery of Parks Custom Pedals. Sent me uh, all these, those first three sent me to demo and that fourth one there doesn't have any logos on it. He actually built that one custom for me specifically uh, as a uh, gift christmas gift here last year and that was a uh it's a, basically it's a clon style overdrive sounds really really good all righty on to this section here uh there's my vinyl copy of robert plant's uh now and zen solo record from the 80s great record great record love that album uh this is my singular sound shelf uh the arrows looper greatest looper pedal on the planet the Beat Buddy, the Beat Buddy Mini, and a couple of their foot switches. If you are into looping and want some really, really good quality, easy to use looping pedals, looper, looping looper setup, uh, the Arrows and the Beats and the Beat Buddy, along with the MIDI cable, are the way to go. Uh, in my opinion, they will do anything that you need them to do. Uh, let's see, this shelf here is just uh, you know some. That's a, you know, just a couple AB, ABY boxes or direct boxes and ABY boxes and boss foot switches and stuff. So nothing too spectacular there. This is uh, kind of the mini pedal shelf. 
most of my mini pedals or mini size pedal, pedals are here not all of them but most of them i don't have that many that is a tom's line uh chorus pedal there in front which i honestly i don't really care for at all <laughs> um <clears throat> despite it being a you know a, a being endorsed by michelangelo batio and i guess he actually does use it but i couldn't uh i've never been able to get a good sound out of it maybe i'll try it again one day that is a c and z audio tape echo c and z audio or another one of those you know like import companies that you find on amazon and uh that pedal i believe was actually pretty affordable they had posted something on their website a while back that they were looking for people on YouTube to demo some of their pedals. So I, I shot them a message and they said, yeah, absolutely. We'd love for you to. Here's a 15% discount. To, uh, this was after I bought the bought that this Tape Echo pedal. So they said, yeah, sure. Here's a 15% discount. You can buy the pedal and the demo it on your channel. And I basically told them, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> so that was the end of my dealings with CZ Audio. Uh, the Outlaw FX pedals. They are, they make really, really good pedals. I like that company a lot. Uh, that's the Vigilating Chorus and the Deputy Marshal, along with the, and then you see the Amp Tweaker Depth Finder right next to it. Basically a device that adds a resonance, resonance and a presence control to your amplifier if the amplifier does not already have one. That's what that does. Uh, that is the Moor Radar, which is their cab simulator. Cool little pedal. Uh, the greatest Marshall in a box distortion pedal in the world is right there. It's a Tone City Model M, and that thing sounds awesome. Anybody looking for a Marshall in a box pedal, that's the one I recommend all the time. Uh, Nux, 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 I have no idea how to pronounce that company's brand name. Worst marketing on the planet uh, because nobody knows how to pronounce it. Nobody knows what they're called. But uh, that was a delay pedal that they used to do i don't think they make it anymore uh it was basically a clone of the tt electronic nova delay real cool L real cool delay pedal man uh and then uh one of the worst sounding distortion pedals i've ever had that was my very very first pedal uh it's a yamaha mbd 20 m distortion pedal from the 80s and it sounds terrible <laughs> this shelf here that is the pictronics class a boost uh i just recently featured that pedal in a video here in the last week or so uh the source audio programmable eq very cool pedal uh very cool eq pedal now discontinued they actually came out with a new version of that yet that i have not got my hands on but uh that is a really really cool eq pedal and the lone fender pedal that i own the fender pugilist I've done two videos on that pedal, and neither one of them have come out sounding all that great on the recording for some reason. But uh, if you don't go by those videos, it's actually a good sounding distortion. Not the heaviest distortion in the world, but a good sounding distortion. Uh, here we got my all-time favorite pedal in the world ever. This is the Amp Tweaker Type Metal Pro that is at, uh, designed by the legendary amp designer, amp builder James Brown. The same man who designed the PV5150 in collaboration with Eddie Van Halen. Greatest pedal on the planet. Love that pedal. And the Blackstar HT Dist X, which is kind of one of their high gain metal distortion sounding things. Uh, yeah, that one, uh, the, the, that one did not have to use its own stupid proprietary 22 volt distortion pedal uh it would be a uh, they, i imagine they probably still be making them but all of the, that entire series of pedals all had this had their weird like they were either 16 volt or 22 volt power supplies that are compatible with nothing else and that is a the boss viwa i bought that on a whim because you know somebody had it dirt cheap and you know i didn't really need it or anything i just like like i said it was just kind of an impulse thing and i meant to do a video on it a long time ago and i never got around to it and you know i don't know maybe i'll still do you know i kind of lost interest not too long after that. uh maybe i'll still do that though that one does have some cool features uh let's see this here little shelf bbe tube screamer uh or the bbe green screamer rather not my favorite tube screamer circuit in the world uh but i've had that thing forever uh, the Idiot Box Mad Doctor Stutter, arguably the weirdest sounding pedal that I own. The Seymour Duncan Shapeshifter Tap Tremolo, that's a cool pedal, that's the old version, the new version that they have out nowadays is a lot smaller. And the Lava Box, which is kind of a weird fuzz, weirdo distortion kind of thing. 
that was another uh, that was another impulse buy thing that I uh, that I that I bought that I picked up on a whim because it was cheap. Uh, then just a couple of pedal tuners, nothing special there. Uh, that is the Vox Joe Satriani Time Machine delay, and that is actually kind of a unique sounding delay pedal. I may need I may need to do a video on all my uh, comparing all my delay pedals just just for the heck of it that one's actually that one's kind of unique because that one's got like a like a little bit more modern digital type of sound as well as a vintage analog type of sound to it uh pb dual clock stereo chorus great little chorus pedal that there's my collection of ogre pedals those are you know they're i mean the they're gimmicky you know they're gimmicky as hell looking obviously uh you know which was their attraction but uh, they actually do sound they all sound pretty good and uh, they're built really really well they're uh, i've done videos on all three of those if you want to check them out i don't know if that company's still in business they're used they used to have a fourth one called the lion i think that was the fuzz uh and you know i never really had much of an interest in that particular one but i can't find that one anywhere and they were supposed to be coming out like designing these really really weird guitars and i don't know that they ever hit the market you know they were they announced those at an amp show like four or five years ago and then like i said the world never saw them so i don't know if they're even still in business but those pedals are still being sold on amazon so and then that is the morally maverick mini wah or mini maverick or maverick mini i think it's called great little wah pedal that's my cook dummy box right there i'm getting ready to sell that thing i don't need it anymore with the two note stuff that i acquired recently all righty these two shelves this used to be one that bottom shelf was one that i added here recently uh, you know the the top shelf there you, well, that's the one that's been there forever that one used to hold nothing but all my tc electronic uh tank series pedals for lack of a better description of those i think paulie calls them the tank series i always called them the smorgasbord series uh because that series didn't really seem to have a name but there's all of the ones there on the top and bottom that i own and then this space over here i turned into well i added uh you know the some of the other tc pedals that i also own you know the, that's a that's a original poly tune that's a poly tune one and you know the mojo mojo overdrive and dark matter distortion those are both great pedals and the spark mini booster and then above that are some of the pedals that the folks at joyo have been let's see they were kind enough to send me all of those the voodoo act the voodoo octave i bought the court the classic course somebody gave me uh if somebody you know the, the switch is, actually doesn't work on that one so if somebody wants it you know tell me and send me a label and i'll just give it to you because it's i mean it's not worth paying somebody to repair it i mean i could just buy a new one for less than what it would cost to have it fixed so if somebody's savvy enough to be able to fix the switch in it let me know and like I said, send me a shipping, you know, pay for shipping, and I'll send it to you. Uh, and the classic flanger I bought. And then, of course, there's those uh, mini pedals there. That is the Wild Boost pedal, the Boogie Master, the Beard Mesa Boogie Distortion, and the Time Magic Analog Delay. Uh, they call those pedals the Iron Man series because, you know, with the lid flipped down on them, they look like Iron Man. And then, while not really a pedal, kind of nowhere really nowhere else to classify that thing that's the infinite sustainer and my two favorite ocd pedals that's the, uh, that is a version 1.4 on the right for the longest time that's the one that you saw everywhere you know those uh, they they made a bunch of the 1.4s so that's the really really popular one and then there on the left that's a version 1.3 those were there were far fewer of those produced uh, and those are actually really really hard to find you know the first three versions all three of those 1.1 1.2 1.3 those were all produced in very very small limited quantities quantities because full tone was a much much smaller company at the time and you know those were you know those are like i said those are a lot harder to find and those are pretty expensive on the used market today but uh, you know there's more of the 1.3s than anything else but according to pedal forums that i've frequented the 1.3 is the one the tone wise is the one to have all righty i'll come back out here to this area this is obviously is where my studio desk lives, where I do my live streams from and all that kind of stuff. Uh, here is these. Are the, this is kind of the the big box brand stuff. A lot of it, minus the TC electronic stuff, I guess. Uh, over here, starting here on this end, that's all my all my electro harmonics pedals. 
including the the big muff stuff that you guys know I don't love. Uh, and below that, I got my MXR pedals, old faithful MXR Phase 90, Phase 95s. Phase 95 is the you know if you're looking for a phaser pedal, that's the one to get. Uh, Carry King 10 band EQ and a double shot distortion and the dime distortion that I bought at a guitar show last year and uh, found out when I got home it didn't work which explained why I got it as cheap as I did and Tony tried to fix it once and it still didn't work awesome so uh, this next section here is the Digitech section and you got my I got three hardwire pedals uh, you guys have seen two of them the valve distortion and the metal distortion uh, I've actually never done a video on the stereo phaser I probably should do that and uh, maybe I did. I don't think I have. If I did, it was a long time ago. Uh, then, of course, the Bad Monkey and the Screaming Blues Overdrive that you guys have seen fairly recently. And then down below it is uh, there's the Tom Cram section with the Gunslinger Distortion Killer Distortion pedal, uh, the DoD Bone Shaker, which is uh, that one's a little out there. <laughs> Uh, I, have to, I may have to revisit that one too. Cab, the cab driver and the greatest chorus pedal ever made on the planet, the Lux. And then here next to it, you have the greatest uh, envelope filter there in the world, the DoD FX50, uh, X, uh, FX25B, and the Digitech PDS1550 dual distortion, which I've had that thing since I was a kid, and now it's, I don't know if it's just dust or something built up on the inside of it, but it doesn't seem to work right anymore. Uh, next are the, the rat pedals along with the little bear uh, rat clone that I demoed here in the last month or so. You guys seem to like that video. Uh, and then above that, I've got the X gear pedals. Those are the they've sent me a couple of them to demo so far. And uh, the crush overdrive in, in particular is phenomenal. Uh, metal, metal, max metal distortion sounds killer too, though. And then a couple of tube screamers, it's just a TS mini, and then uh, my favorite. Ibanez Tube Screamer model, the TS90X. And last but not least, we have all of my boss pedals. There's all the 200 series pedals there on the end. And then the top row's got the overdrives and stuff. It's the SD1, OD2R, OD3, OS2, Blues Driver, and the Chorus Ensemble. Love that Chorus pedal. Uh, DD7 Digital Delay and the RC3 Loop Station. And then below that, everything else, those are all the distortion pedals. That's a DS1, uh, DS2, uh, DF2, DF2, Super Feedbacker Distortion, PW2 Power Driver, XT2 Extortion Pedal, MD2 Mega Distortion, ML2 Metal Core, uh, the SD2 Power Stack, and the Metal Zone, and the Wazacraft Metal Zone, of course. Followed by the noise suppressor, which doesn't really get used much anymore. And then a couple of Boss EQ pedals. See if I can shoot that one more time because this camera was getting heavy while I was holding it with one hand. And before I forget, there's also well, the one last pedal that I own that uh, is actually not on any of these shelves is this guy, the Talent Booster. <laughs> I intend to do a comedy video with here coming up at some point. Uh, the, the ideas that I've got outlined for that video are, uh, it's, it, unfortunately it's going to be pretty extensive, so I kind of got to find time to do that one. But, uh, I, right now, basically I just keep it plugged in, you know, what it, what it does. I mean, it turns on an LED really, really well, and that's what it does. There's not even a power input for it. So basically I just keep it in the effects loop of my IRT studio that I use for been using for most of my demos these days uh, I just keep that in the effects loop because it is really really difficult to get back behind this rack and plug cables and unplug cables in and out of the effects loop whether I want to use it if I you know if I don't want to use the effects loop for anything then I can just keep that thing plugged in there in the middle of it and keep the signal flowing through it and as far as the ant concerned there's nothing in there so so thank you all so much for watching, checking out my pedal collection. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I have done this and uh, showed all showed you guys everything, uh, all these you know the. Red 
ridiculous number of pedals that I've amassed. Probably about time for me to unload a few of them, actually. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please consider subscribing to this channel if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.